how does uh, a pet influence the personality like like the characteristic traits of a person like growing up uh, when like from childhood yeah kids yeah. and uh, just pets just briefly on that yeah yeah mm-hmm. kids and pets are like that's that's a whole topic um, that um, that that has been well researched and uh, mm-hmm. children who grow up with pets have always um, turned out to be better humans um I, I, there is there is a lot of reasoning behind it and which makes a lot of sense is that as a child when you have a pet there is always that constant uh, relationship between the child and the pet which is different from a parent and the uh, pet or an older sibling and the and the pet or a younger sibling and the pet okay so mm. there is that equal there is that equal um nature which comes with the child and the pet okay so it right. is okay. it is that a uh, thing and also the the element of nurturing the element of um, giving the element of sharing uh, there are so many lessons life uh, lessons are learned at that that stage um, which are very difficult to be imparted um, by human interactions okay right. and, so when you say equal uh, like in terms of all of this like giving sharing yes and this, yes Stuff, yes like, so yeah. you have like you have ice cream like you know okay fine you you give some kind of and when you're sleeping you 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 just have your pet sleeping there and you just like so i i, I think there is that whole level the level of emotional um um connection that a child gets with the pet's interaction uh, and also you know most most of the time the growth of a pet is more than the growth of i mean it, it's at a higher rate than the growth of a child so as mm. when a, uh, when say in the human age when you look at so mostly right. when we talk about um any 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 companion animal pet whether it is a rabbit or a um you know um a cat or a dog or whatever they their uh, life span and their aging is at a different rate compared to the human human age um, aging right. okay so um, for example it is equal so people have said you know the uh, like um, uh, one year uh, one human year um, um, is equivalent to uh, seven um, six to seven dog years uh, in, mm. uh, so sorry one dog year it's other way uh one yeah. dog year is equivalent of so, so you know a dog will age uh, when a dog is 2 years the dog is already um an adult whereas a mm-hmm. child you know if the child had a, had a pet at 2 years old when the child is 3 years old the the child is only child is still a child and very young whereas mm. the dog has actually and so that is when the whole equality thing kind of becomes stronger because for the child it's still equal whereas the dog has actually matured more and the dog actually looks upon the child as he saw her sibling and he saw right. her yeah so as the child grows that kind of level, so it it becomes a um very um you know um um symbiotic type of a relationship between the child and the pet and mm-hmm. they they become better humans because the sense of responsibility the sense of giving the sense of sharing and all that that they learn from the pet they they do it with others as well so they wow. kind of extend the the relationship they have with the pet to others so to being good is something the pet teaches you wow being, that's yeah. that's deep so, insight yeah yeah so that is that is the that is the thing that grows in the child which the child mm. imparts to the outside world as they go anybody i have seen lots of people in my in my uh, different um, you know interactions as in my professional life in my personal life in my uh, work with animals and I always i i know a person who had a pet because the way they they behave uh-huh. they interact it's very easy to i get it and i see i didn't grow up with a pet but i always wanted to have a pet when i was growing up because my connection okay. with animals yeah so it is something i never fulfilled as, as a child but i had to be uh, an adult and i had to be uh, it was many many years later i had my first pet i did not grow up with a child uh, with a uh, pet yeah, yeah. Didn't know that. I, yeah. I i i truly truly wanted that when i was a, when i was very young but um, yeah okay. but i i interacted with the uh, animals and i had always a very deep connection to animals so wow okay i didn't know that i thought Okay I grew up um, with that no I didn't I, I my mm-hmm. first pet came in, my, the first pet that ever came into my life was when I was uh, so that was in 1990 so I was almost like uh, 35 years old All right so this uh, is like again um 
something that is uh, not much uh, you know out there in people's awareness that is having a female and a male pet and this distinction right uh, because having a female pet like you know uh, when the when the pet comes to a certain age there are like difficulties you know people don't prefer uh, female pets so this is distinction what can people understand better about this yeah so again you know it all comes about uh, how commodification is and how uh, we commodify um, uh, an animal uh, to suit our um, our lifestyle or our liking or dislikes or whatever so mm. um, most of the time when people choose a pet they want to have a male pet because they feel that uh, it, it, also there is some inherent re- rational behind it. they they keep rationalizing themselves as uh, male pets are stronger they are the guarding so they have we have to guard uh, so it is only the male that is you know strong and can guard whereas a female cannot guard or female is like uh, not very um you know uh, it doesn't have the guarding instinct as much as the male so these are all perceptions uh, the reasons why some people don't choose but many people don't choose because the female you know comes on heat it can cause a lot of problems so uh, why not you know we, let us not go into all that let's get a, get a male mm. whereas the other side of the story is that there are also these commercial exploitation of pets by breeders who always want, want they always want a female pet because oh. that is where they get their money from so we see diametrically opposite type of interest in two sets of uh, people who are you know it is it is uh, furthering their aim or furthering their like or dislike or furthering their um, commercial needs uh, which is making that kind of choice uh, mm. to choose a particular gender so this gender mm. bias breed bias again uh, breed is another big bias that people have that you know the normal in, in indian dog which is a cross bred over multiple generations is not considered fashionable because it is just very common it's there on the street so something that is on the street is not you know it doesn't have value because it's mm. not it's on the street so that is the perception which t- makes many people not to choose a you know indian country dog as a pet because they feel a fancy breed is like it it is a status symbol it is a it, it is a distinction that they have because it's like you know which car are you have which car do you Ishmael. drive which yeah so which movies go, yeah so they see that movies in in big bunglers that have particular breeds and that becomes like a fashion like you mentioned yes yes in movie you see one dog which is sort of tied with the rib, i mean like a uh, put a ribbons around the thing and has long hair so then it becomes the fancy and in this vodafone i mean i must i must really oh. i i really mm-hmm. hated that that advertisement so much later on because of the abuse this particular pug this animal was bred you know insensibly uh, so much of breeding happened with and such such a low immune system and so much of um, uh, you know physical deformities that uh, that prevents that animal from living a um, that pet from, that particular breed from living a normal life there's so much such breeding breathing uh, difficulty because you know that brachyphilic as they call it the, the snub nosed uh, feature that they have and the eyes protruded which is like so vulnerable that it it causes the slightest of uh, uh, as um, you know injury will actually will make the eye almost like useless so it it is it that that particular breed was such such a craze because of the uh, vodafone advertisement uh, you know mm-hmm. follow me wherever and and this pug following this guy i mean so this 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 whole media and this this thing is it, it has such a bad influence on and on humans uh, because we can be we can be misled uh by the media we can be told so much of lies and see because we fail to think on our own terms we we fail to rationalize ourselves we are carried away by the media with all these fancy things so the gender discrimination breed discrimination and uh, all of this came about because of that and it's it's very sad that um, uh, however much we try to create the awareness um it's it's not enough because the media is so the the the, the images on the media are so powerful 
um right. that uh, it, it, it is not only in the in the, in the uh, animal thing it is about the things you buy in your home it, i i'm just giving an example simple thing like you know a cleaning a product that you buy in your home you are so much influenced by the advertisement of some particular product if you make an advertisement appealing to you you are very likely that you will buy that even if that product is inferior so it is it's the same tactic that is being used by breeders by anybody who is exploiting uh, these animals so you know uh, having uh, trained over like 5000 people the one thing that worries me the most is people not thinking for themselves like yes. thinking by themselves I, i guess that is like one intrinsic problem that can show up in different ways and this is one such example right so and and solution i think can be you know um you do spaying uh, right so now we got lila and she's doing a uh, wonderful uh in in the farm and that can be that there can be w- one thing that people can know more about and yes, that could be a solution people right? can know and it's not only for females i mean a lot of times people think oh it's a, if it's a female it has to be spayed and if it's a male you know that's fine that's again you know that is again in in your mind that that gender bias where you fe- feel um the male need not be neutered but the male goes through also a tremendous amount of frustration uh yeah. when you know a females in heat are in the neighborhood they they go through aggression and whenever there is a you know a, a street dog nuisance complaint it is always about male dogs fighting and male dog aggression wow. is predominantly because you know some female is in heat then several males are like fighting uh, so much and and the male dogs many many times they get injured very very badly and they mm-hmm. come with the uh, gashing wounds and like very deep uh, and and rabies spreading of rabies spreading of um you know um uh, diseases i mean there are a lot of these uh, venereal um uh, di- tumors that spread um, with um, unneutered um, animals on the street so it is not only for females that can be spayed which will uh, prevent them from um coming on heat or multiplying it is also the males that um, we have to protect them against cancers tumors later on in life and also aggression and also like you know behavioral issues lot of pets at home without any kind of male male pets have lot of behavioral issues um because they they are very frustrated they get frustrated they are not fixed see you have you have moved them from an environment of their natural environment into your home so now you have to make it uh, make it easier for them to carry on with their life so again you know mm. we are talking about welfare welfare here so we have changed mm. the way the animal is it's, it's not living its natural life you know its natural life would be you know its own habitat which we have changed we have brought the pet to your home now it is it's our responsibility that that the pet live a fulfilling life and the fulfilling life mm. is not by allowing it to mate and reproduce and have you know thousands of uh, pets that nobody wants and putting them out on the street and making them go under vehicles or having a miserable life but to responsibly spay neuter your mm. your pet whether it's a male or female keeping the pet healthy happy emotionally stimulating and having a relationship with your with your pet as your family member so these are the things that i think you know people have to know when you have a pet at home um if you're not one of those people who who work with a lot of animals you are probably the, your only source of uh, animal presence in your home is your pet which is which, which can be very fulfilling if you put mm. some thought to it so these are some simple things that people can keep in their mind and um if you cannot have a pet you can always foster if you cannot right. permanently have a pet there is fo- fostering is such a such a rewarding experience such an amazing experience where you help a pet from nothing to everything you know right. a pet would have lost its life just changes the world for the pet i mean you can't like there is this very famous saying that you know you can't change the world for all the animal but you can change the world the whole world for one animal right you know mm. the whole world will will change for that animal and and you are instrumental in it i mean what is more rewarding than that you know so when we right. say today we have touched 65000 animal it just makes it makes us so overwhelmingly proud and i mean we it, it is nothing it was totally unimaginable at the time when we started uh, this organization uh, all we wanted was okay if we ever came across an animal that needed help we we have a place to go we have we could address that that was all we thought about at that time uh, but today you know we have we have become like a one stop place where everybody comes to us 
I mean, we are happy that we are able to do, but I think more and more people should look into open up and not right, right. You know, think of shelter as a place to come and dump animals, come and keep animals for life. So people have to look into themselves and see what they can do rather than what, you know, shelters should do or shelters must do. I mean, everybody preaches. And why do you, why do you uh, promote yourself as a shelter? When you say you cannot take in this puppy, my dog, my, my street dog littered, there are eight puppies, now you take them. So why should we take them? Why are the people there not able to care for them so that we can help find homes for them? We can help vaccinate them. We can help them lead a better life by sterilizing them on time. Them. If we take them in, their, their life is not going to be better because they are going to be exposed to so much of sick and uh, you know uh, injured animals in our shelter that in no time probably they're all going to die right so this is the uh, awareness that as human animal society i would i would want to create among uh, among the people of not just the city but anybody who's living anywhere in the world any any human who who is capable of you know able to offer this kind of support to a vulnerable animal Okay, so so whoever is listening to this, uh, this can be a good thing for you as well, right? Um, can be a, a good relationship and some good um, thing that can happen to you as well. So it's just one question from what you just said. So when you said dogs uh, can be better off in their natural habitat, I just had this question. What, what is their actual natural habitat? See, dogs, uh, time immemorial have been scavengers. So how, if you go back to history, right, um, the first animal that ever came to a human habitat is the dog. It is not any domesticated animal. It is the dog that came into human. So dogs' uh, ancestors are, you know, they are from wolf family, right? Wolves. Wolf. So the wolves are what, I mean, the dog is a, is a species that, you know, their, their ancestors are the wolves. So the they enjoyed human company and they felt it is the companionship that brought them together. So there was, they, they're scaven natural scavengers. So they're not like predators. They, they don't go like, they just eat what others have left behind. They, uh, they, they you know, the, the carcasses, the, they, mm -hmm. they're not like, they're not per se predators, even though they can be predators, but it's not like that's not their natural instinct. The natural instinct is a scavenging uh, thing. And, um, so they have been living like that in the wild, like that. So these feral dogs and, um, you know, that, that are there in this. So that is their natural habitat. So once right. humans, uh, you know, civilization set in, humans started moving into cities that, you know, that is the whole relationship that evolved over time uh, that these animals became pets. Animals started being, you know, uh, living with the humans, living in a different type of environment than what they were used to. And we started also influencing them uh, in their, like, uh, the type of food they were eating. Uh, so they were always scaven scavengers. So where they were eating uh, carcasses in the wild and the forest, here we were giving leftovers. Uh, we, were, we were giving human leftover food. So that is where mm. they were, that is what, you know, they, they had for thriving. Um, so they thrived on, uh, you know, leftover food. Uh, so then... Today, the natural habitat of a dog is very difficult to define because it has it has right. moved above and beyond our imagination of what it was those days. So mm. now, I think the best thing uh, for these companion animals, whether it is dogs or cats that are undomesticated animals, which people raise them for some particular purpose. Dogs are not raised for, okay, for people might say, you know, that, uh, you know, having a pet at home, is it, what is this for? Some For, for different people, there's different reasons. Some people say, I want to guard I want a guard dog and mm. uh, I want, uh, some people say, no, I want a pet. Some people say, um, I want this, uh, you know, my parents are getting old. I want a companion for my, my parents and I want a very calm dog that will, uh, that will help my, you know, soothe them and just, just be. So different people have these different things and, uh, you know, how this animal has to kind of understand the mood. To, I, I, to, <laughs> I also know a, a person just to um, add this, I know a person who uh, has a dog because uh, a male having a dog is is good because girls get attracted. Oh, he has a puppy. And this used to be very funny, uh, you know, just one of the recent ads. 
and they can just you know uh, i have a puppy and that can create yeah. friendship among us yes 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 um so lots of people buy these very expensive breeds and put them in a kennel and all the all i see when i go to is this rottweiler sitting inside so this rottweiler is a dogs that were bred for like you know they are like this extremely active and alert dogs that are and they put them in putting them in a kennel is really the worst ever thing that somebody can do what is really the point in having a pet like that and i we have we have confis i mean we have gone and rescued two two boxes that were that were and brother and sister both are not uh, neutered or spayed and they were kept inside a very small uh, bathroom like thing and they had bought them as as uh, you know puppies when they were very young siblings mm. brother and sister and not neutered and spayed and they are together so you know this is lot of inbreeding happen and most right. of the breeders most of the breeders are guilty of inbreeding and um, it is just for commercial expert makes it very easy for them they they breed with the, you know the mother and son father and daughter brother and sister so this this whole thing is such such a emotional trauma in terms of i mean the animal doesn't know because the animal comes on heat the animal mates it it is gone but you know it is the bad genes this inbreeding causes a lot of um, genetic deformities and um, um vulnerability in terms of you know resistance immunity is immunity goes very very low i mean very poor immune response mm. and all of this problems uh, people have created um by um by this commercial exploitation and and this this perception of having a pet is um is is truly you know pr- you know dated and primitive <laughs> i mean to to say the least um we we just don't uh, we shouldn't be breeding at all we shouldn't be breeding at all i mean it is natural breeding whatever happens in a natural environment is okay but you know breeding for commercial purposes or for your own fancy uh, you know oh i i want to have my dog litter i want my dog to experience motherhood i mean this is like the worst ever thing i have ever heard i mean this this dog is not waiting to enjoy mother- this is a, that for the dog it is only a survival instinct that it's having it's not like experiencing i mean this anthropomorphism this word uh, i mm. i you you know but the, that that's like you know we attributing things which are which is in our mind attributing to the pet and right. creating unnecessary expectations from your pet and the pet doesn't deliver but it, it goes out on the street there are so many animals we have, so many females we have rescued from the street that have been breeder rejects uh the breeders you know they breed them and when they stop uh, producing offspring with they they bred so continuously that you know they, the the offspring start dying very quickly so they go through uh, this there is there needs to be space i mean there is lot of uh, laws about breeding um uh, breeding laws are there not nothing is followed in this country uh so all of this uh, has resulted in in a tremendous amount of exploitation and trauma to thousands and thousands of companion animals you know and 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 especially purebreds right i think this is a very important thing which you're bringing out ma'am because you see just considering this covid in a broader point of view and all the other diseases that have really affected in a large scale in the human society have come from uh, you know animals and and natural you know unnatural uh, ways of treating animals and you know abusing animals and uh, you know i i truly believe that uh, you know all of this leads to some sort of um a collective karmic sort of reaction wherein you know this can happen i don't know because this is also believed by uh, great philosophers in greek uh, greece uh, greek philosophers and stuff and when when you do unnecessary stuff like this and it just comes back to you so i think this is a very important thing and a lot of points like you know in breeding and stuff so i think there's a good point for uh, pet owners to consider all of this and not just blindly buy uh, or in fact adopt don't shop is what you say in the yeah, website so yeah i've noticed and i think a lot of people have this question we see dogs barking and chasing vehicles right now i i you know i just used to speculate why does this happen i think that that person the, the van person must have done something to the dog and is just chasing or something like that you used to think but what what is really the reason 
yeah what actually we it? It, 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 yeah what we should do about it what is the reason so the reason is very simple see dogs love chasing they are they 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 love it it's a game for them it is really oh. not that they have some ulterior motive in their mind that they have to chase this particular bad guy because he's this on the bike it's not it's none of right. that the, the, the mm. dog i mean you you throw a ball and why does your dog run after the ball have you thought about it why does your dog run after the ball It just loves to chase fast moving objects so some dogs some dogs realize it's not a good idea to chase and they stop doing it but many dogs don't learn you know i mean for them it's that inherent uh, thing in their genes to chase something moving fast right. so the the way to do it is it is not easy to follow but i have tried i have made many people try and you know uh, the strangest thing is when one one guy complained i i will tell you that story it is really very interesting uh, mm. but i have i have seen it myself and i have i have told many people who have also tried it the thing to do is to just stop you do just stop and you stand still if you are riding a bike and your dog the dog is chasing just stop the bike it is not easy i i agree people are always scared when the dog is chasing they think the dog is going to bite but the moment you stop the dog is stopping it's like wow what happened you know why oh yeah no. i was just enjoying my game and i was just trying to do no. what <laughs> why is this so it, so there are people who have done this and they've stopped and given some biscuit the dog is happily eating the biscuit they go their way so mm. it is really not about the dog chasing because they don't like the guy or they like, don't like the bike or anything it is some inherent thing and not every dog is having it but many yeah. dogs do have it and they get into a lot of people have got into accidents because of this um yeah. I, i totally agree this is something which which we we all have to consciously uh, keep remembering you know and because of lot of dogs I, there is lot of breeding i mean lot of proliferation of dogs on the street which is also a reason why some of these dogs get into this because the numbers go up they start you know like getting uh, pumped up by uh, see there is dynamics amongst themselves too there there is always this uh, you know uh, pack behavior this one dog mm. runs then every other dog will start running uh, yeah. dogs are pack animals we all know that and they attack in packs that's how they have always survived these huge in in the forest when there were like you know much bigger animals that were you know stronger than them and how they survived is just because of their pack behavior they as a pack they come and attack so the other you know the other party even if they are like stronger and bigger they are they are afraid and they back off so this right. is this comes into the, the, the what is there in the genes is not something that can go away um it, it will go away it may go away by 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 conditioned behavior just like us for humans also we have also conditioned behavior by which uh, we also do certain things similar to that many dogs also we can change that by conditioning uh but not all dogs can be conditioned as you know so some dogs end up having these kind of problems and we have had to intervene in some cases where there have been serious issues caused and we have had to relocate dogs even though we don't recommend relocating any animal it is not a good thing to do but sometimes mm-hmm. there is this intense conflict there is threat to the life of the dog there is so much of uh hatred that is being uh, you know uh, against uh, some one particular animal that is chasing uh yeah, how much ever you tell in small children is difficult to tell them you know stop and if a child gets bitten it's really really bad there is right. mm-hmm. everything blows out of proportion you know whatever happened if a child gets bitten it's it's never going to be you know treated in a kind way um so all of that has you know been a reason for uh for some of sometimes for us to take some extreme steps of moving relocating the animal somewhere and so on but most of the dogs um chase you know in a nice way i mean <laughs> when i say in a nice yeah. way not not to really cause harm harm right, right okay that's i think that's uh the main point here right like because people have this thing that oh this mad dog is just chasing cyclists, uh, oh yeah cyclists yeah, c- yeah. cyclists yeah. yeah and yeah people have uh, you know fallen down and stuff but i guess this yeah. awareness of just how do- dog doesn't really want to do harm you know yeah um, It's just, it's just trying oh. to have some fun. It's just thinking it's having fun. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the last oh. question is, how do you um, see taking pets to work? I guess this is not common in India, but in the mm-hmm. West, there are facilities when the workplaces pets are being taken. And I also found uh, in, this interesting thing when I was just like browsing recently that uh, people's productivity at work 
is seen to be uh, seen to be good uh, mm. compared to not having pets uh, mm. bringing pets to the workplace so how do you see this happening in india what do you think about this thing happening in india it's a very very long road for something like let us at least open up our resid- apartment complexes for pets i mean like <laughs> you know do you know the number of uh, complaints we get every single day um, people being not allowed to keep their own pets in their own homes in in the apartments so we have as a society we have a long way to go uh, before we we give dignity to pets you know our, our our idea of dignity to pets is really really you know very 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 poor very low um, mm. we need to treat treating pets uh, you know respectfully is something in india it it will take a very long time um so many apartment complexes putting restrictions not allowing a pet to go on an elevator so all of that when so much of all that is there bringing a pet to the workplace seems to be you know it's 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 a completely you know our <laughs> it is an outrageous thing to think about it at this point because we are not even opening up our uh, uh, you know our own homes we are not allowing people in their own homes to have pets of their choice mm. you know and how do you expect workplaces to be accommodative of the employees bringing pets there it is true uh, in western countries all of this is happening and it is in a positive way pets do bring so much positivity in our workplace i mean in uh, our office here at human animal society which is you know we, we have an office as well and people come here to work we have pets here this is like such mm. an as i always say it's so nice to come to work here because you there are, there are animals here tatas yeah. tatas see there are some uh, play, places where uh, it, this has been uh, seriously been thought about in in, in mumbai uh, ratan tata as you all know ratan tata is is a big uh, dog lover and uh, in fact mm. uh, tatas when they moved uh, their location uh they the first thing they did was to uh, find a place for all the dogs to be kept safely before the uh, place was shifted and they did not yeah. think of the humans but they first thought about the animals and after the animals were shifted uh, they, they it had to be they they had this wonderful uh, setup where the animals were like all the dogs were free and they had their own lounges they had their own i mean it is it is nothing like it, but they were like allowed to roam around everywhere there were people to you know keep food for them water for them it was all there it, it was an amazing experience and as a telecom person i have we have really had uh, i i had to uh, go um, uh, to the tata office for for work is always such a pleasure to see animals i mean not inside their office space that, that wasn't there i mean they have separate space for uh, the pe- uh, yeah. the pet alone but you know around the premises you will find uh, you will find a lot of dogs just lying there um mm. and uh, everybody and nobody dare uh, do anything because the management was management is shooting for them right it's, it's, so it is the full management that is behind those dogs nobody dare to right. do no employee no uh, security guard no nobody will do anything to any of those animals that's an amazing experience probably that's the only example i can say about a, a great place here hotels don't allow you can you this was in mumbai a, uh, this is in mumbai this is in the tata office in mumbai yeah okay in the office uh, in their office office meaning they they don't they don't have i mean you can as an employee you cannot take your pet inside the office that is not allowed um but you know the the street animals in uh, around the, that area they're all looked after okay. by them uh they have all been uh, they they've given such a, a wonderful uh, you know um setup where they can they they have access to food and water all the time they're all spayed and neutered uh they have looked after if any one of them falls sick immediately veterinary help is sought for them and they have their own like a uh, place to go and sleep they have you know uh, you know nice uh, what you call um, um, um blankets uh, on which they can lie on Mm. it's an amazing uh, thing but uh, workplaces i mean in 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 uh, western countries uh, not all workplaces are friendly uh, but in europe it is a lot more common uh, pets are like treated as family in most places you can take them to malls you can take them to uh, in trains in buses in every public transport the pet is allowed as part of your family so right. that's much more common and so people are conditioned to to accept it as they are, when they grow up itself so 
i think that that uh, sense of um, uh, acceptance is very high there because you 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 always see it so whatever you see you are conditioned to accept it right that is that is that is why so much cruelty in this country goes accepted as well because you grow right. up seeing all mm. that cruelty so when you grow up seeing kindness you accept kindness and that becomes part of your life you grow up mm. seeing cruelty you accept cruelty as part of life and you ignore that so uh, it is it's the same thing so workplaces i we have a long way to go for that uh, nandeep i'm sorry to say that but i think we must really work hard to get apartments and all that to ex- at least abide by the laws so the laws there is this very uh, clear law allowing anybody uh, to have a pet of their choice in their own home it doesn't matter if it's an apartment it's your independent home it's in a, it is in a gated community it doesn't matter what but you mm. are you you have a right uh, to have a pet of your choice in your own home which is not being honored in in so many apartment call we get complaints from so many people saying uh, you know we are being asked to um uh, we have been asked to leave our pet uh, uh, um, you know um, t- um, take our pet out uh, out of the complex because we, we are, this is a pet free complex so there is nothing called pet free complex it's illegal it is illegal to uh, you know brand some complex as pet free there is this pets is pet is your right in you need your own home if you cannot have a pet of your choice what is the point in your having your home so in if an apartment complex you are registered and if the apartment is having as a resident welfare association putting a law like that it is your right to uh, stand up against it so i always tell people just don't call animal right. welfare organizations it's your right to have your pet i will we will provide you the legal you know the law that states that take the law go there and if you are being harassed go to the police station that is where you have to go so we in terms of law enforcement in terms of you know following the laws when it comes to animals it always takes a back seat i think all of that needs to change before we open up our workplaces for animals but i think it will be an amazing thing to have um, you know animals as part of your at least let animals be uh around uh, uh, you know workshop and many workshops nowadays are having i i i see in coimbatore some of the workshops having <coughs> pets around i mean and the security guard um taking care of them or the caretaker somebody saying oh it is our pet i uh, we have we we provide food and water and the pet uh, we have a space that we have created night the pet sleeps here and there are some workshops where they have called us for vaccinating their pets so we've gone there and vaccinated and, and they say oh should we find homes is it no this is their home this is their place you know just make sure they are having a good life just let them be spay and neuter them give them vaccinate them give them food and water just let them live their life they are happy here right. they don't want to be tied up in someone's home and treated as you know like put a chain around them and thinking this is life this is their life so i think yeah i think we 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 really have to um you know think on their terms and not on our terms you know so right that is that that's the shift i think um we need to we need to have in our in our own minds right <laughs> right thank you ma'am because i've seen it it would be really nice right if i've seen in movies where um a pet owner gives you know can you take care when i come back in the evening i can you can collect and one biggest thing that you would uh one biggest lesson rather that you have learned from pets life lesson okay so i would say everything in my life one. i've learned from my pet so the biggest lesson i have learned from my pet is to live the moment you know to living oh. the moment that is the biggest lesson i've learned see we will live either in the past or we are anxious about our future i if we just don't I, i think as humans we have lost our ability to live the present to enjoy the moment mm. i think that is the biggest lesson i've learned from especially for my dogs they enjoy the moment they, they just right. they just take it so I, they just live that moment so beautifully so i think if we could mm. do that i think we would be better we would be better off yeah <laughs> awesome awesome i'm just i i love this answer being in the present moment i can also relate you know um they just be in the present moment also like children right like like kids they are they are always uh, they are all in the present moment okay yes. awesome and the last one is what is the biggest challenge i'm sure you would have gone through a lot of challenges and you've uh, touched so many lives uh, you know besides all of that what is one biggest challenge that you face in the organization <laughs> if you have to boil yeah. it down to one 
yeah the one the, the, you know changing attitudes i mean that's the biggest challenge i i i think uh, you know the 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 click i mean the 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 switch has to turn the, the switch turning on uh in a human's mind uh mm. to facilitate that that that's the biggest challenge i think once that is overcome it becomes it becomes smooth sail after that so the the, the challenge is to take the, I... the turn this way yeah okay um awareness is that is that is that a, no the no, attitude that's a general it, it, term it yeah the, no it is not a man i see it is that moment in your life that it just clicks uh that you you are just overwhelmed with that firm conviction in you uh, that mm. that just transformed you right and right, right. It, it has done for you. it is it's made that thing in you so you think it's very easy to do it on somebody else and y- you kind of uh, so that is the challenge i face because every time um you you make somebody think on their own or you make them so rationalize with themselves and mm. you are so much a product of your own conditioning that you 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 fail to open up to to make that connect or change that thing that is the mm-hmm. challenge that it face so right okay i don't know if that would can be called as the, as the biggest challenge because it's the change of attitude mindset perception to towards something that is that will give you so much in return see it is it is you it is a it's so beneficial see i'm not trying to do make you do some work that is going to tire you that is going to cause any uh, physical strain to you that is that is going to make you uh, sick or unwell or or uh, you know anything else but it is going to make make it so much better you make your life so much better but mm. it just doesn't click it does just fails to click you know and and that is so frustrating and that is the that is my my biggest uh, challenge and, and uh, you know yeah um, I, i i can't tell you know how much sometimes it's very frustrating when that ha- that happens right okay in fact that switch can uh, once it is been realized it's in fact rewarding um yeah and, and it, you, if we, you, if we you, look at it that way. yes and your life is so much better right better. i mean your life ch- changes for the better and you become a better person and you reap the rewards i mean it's not it's not the i mean you reap the rewards and at the same time the society as a whole benefits right so mm-hmm. a change that happens within an individual it's it it is like this, this candle that is like you know it's just giving out its light and it's it just spreads so so um uh, powerfully and so profoundly that it starts to uh, kind of you know lighten up i mean light light up the 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 world around the surroundings and it so so it just makes you feel so good that you have changed for a better person but then still people uh, still it's so difficult to get that across that mm. is, that is a very very deep challenge if is uh, when uh, you're not opening up and you, you're so closed in your mind that you you refuse to see it um and that's very frustrating <laughs> right thank you so much and i hope that whatever uh, you know challenges like this you mentioned um will be relieved and people get to know more awareness because in this video there have been a lot of beautiful takeaways awareness a lot of things to reflect on for pet owners and as well as people who um are thinking about uh you know making a difference this can be a great thing so thank you ma'am It's if been... i can um, i would like to you know um, say a quote which uh, which is um which yeah. has profoundly affected me and um, which really has been a very uh, it has been a revelation um that um you know that has just enabled me to keep moving on because that mm-hmm. that has really been um one of the very motivating a uh, quote that i have ever seen uh, written by anybody uh okay. so it is a it's by a american uh, naturalist um, whose name is uh, henry beston so i'll just uh, if you don't mind i'll just read read that quote uh, Please, so yeah. it just says uh, we patronize the animals for their incompleteness um for their tragic fate of having taken form so far below ourselves and therein we err and greatly err for the animal shall not be measured by man in a world older and more complete than ours 
they are more finished and complete gifted with extensions of the senses we have lost or never attained living by voices we shall never hear they are not brethren they are not underlings they are other nations caught with ourselves in the net of life and time so this is just been so wow. profound i mean uh, 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 i don't know i don't know how somebody could have thought so deeply about this it is just amazing because it is it is it's just that you know earthquakes are you know which which, which uh, animal uh, discovers earthquakes first mm. uh, oh um i'm just guessing is it birds no it's ant ant okay ants yes they are the right. ones who who, who okay. understand who who uh, for whom yeah they are the so all with our our great brains with so much of complex technology all the seismic motions vibrations and analysis and all of it our levels of predicting an earthquake is so poor compared to the ability for an ant to sense an earthquake you know come so it, it isn't it amazing isn't it amazing this it's, tiny it's little, amazing Yeah. yeah and all animals are endowed with such a and one more thing i mean i would uh, i as in, in, at the risk of extending this uh, thought so i i was just thinking see everything that humans have learned or humans have used and humans have uh, you know uh, enabled to happen in this world they have all been uh, imit- i mean like they've all been um, um sourced right. from animals inspired from animals like how did we fly airplanes how did we uh, mm. even think about planes right i mean it was all inspired by uh, uh, music this is just so much music that we have created i mean there is so much technology i mean we we think it's such confusion and tech. i mean these are these animals have done it done it so effortlessly so so right. so sensibly early mornings you hear so much of such melody i mean it's unbelievable right you see everything that humans have achieved uh, we have been inspired from creatures around us i mean it it doesn't have to be live animals it is nature it can be plants it can be all of that so much mathematics in the leaves i mean this whole fractal the whole whole discipline of mathematics is you know this whole fractal theory that is all from mm. the shapes and uh, of the leaves the shapes that you see around you in nature the shapes the are all very much math- hariko so that structure Fractal. which makes it stable uh mm. you know the what structures make it stable how does a bird build its nest how did how does it build i mean it's just so stable it's just so uh, strong and it's so powerful to handle and this tiny you know creature is able to do it so mm. yeah so i i would like to end my uh, thing by this tactic we we are very we are the lowest of uh, life you know in terms of understanding <laughs> yeah. the universe and i think we must accept it you know, so. oh yeah this is <laughs> this is very humbling uh, thought and uh, i'm grateful you know for you to have added this point at the end very profound quote uh, from that person you know uh, yeah. especially the line uh, i'm just paraphrasing animals cannot be measured by man right yes. i mean yes. that's so true that's so profound well thought thank you uh, it's amazing in but, this i mean like it just for somebody to just think about it you know it seems he, he went to some uh, nature place and he was he was there and he he was just observing nature and mm. he, he 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 just uh, realized that his calling is in writing i mean he just found out that he he he, he he could write i mean and he just wrote such profound uh, pieces there when he was sitting there it's so uh, i have never um, read something so deep that connects with nature and with that that the thought i think it's so well articulated i i've right, never seen right. anything better articulated about this animals and, and you know the relationship yeah so thank, thank you, you so Blink. much thank, you, thank you for for giving me the opportunity i mean i i'm just so um, i felt so privileged actually to to have been able to work with so many animals and being able to you know that whatever thought that came into my mind that on that day which which led to all this to happen i think it was like karma i mean like in the big sense you know that mm. um, yeah that made that made my life so meaningful so uh, so enriching and um, so gratifying i mean it's it's amazing i mean it's yeah 
and yeah. this is being you know like a legacy getting uh, you know inspiring a lot of other people to continue this right Lian? yeah and i, I hope again. so i hope so and they can inspire so many people and i'm i'm, I'm just inspired by these young i actually uh, i am inspired by the youngsters i mean frankly speaking um uh, i'm so much inspired by the young people yeah i i i see them think so uniquely the kind of questions they ask the kind of way they think the kind of you know um i i always i mean every day i'm i'm so inspired uh, seeing the younger people who are work who work with us right right okay all thanks to them as well and and just a quick shout out to the possum people uh they yes, doing a great job good. yeah and thank you thank you so much ma'am uh again for the code that you shared at the end and all the insights and knowledge that you've shared thank you so much i'm sure this will be a lot of uh, points for all the people and i'll leave a link down in the description box the human animal society website you can go check that out you can also visit the shelter if you want right yes uh, yes absolutely and- yeah we would love to do our sanctuary actually we have a sanctuary as well um mm-hmm. the sanctuary is uh, like a place where So, you know some of the animals we can't put them back wherever we pick them after they they are um, um healed and all that because of their conditions we can't they can't fend for so the sanctuary is a place where you can learn you can spend time with them they all oh. have come from a life um with trauma but they have overcome it and you know those rescue animals teach a lot of determination great that that gives you a lot of confidence and hope i think that's a that's a life lesson learned spending time there wow okay so uh, so this sanctuary you have a separate website for that i can yeah, no no uh, it's the same website yeah, the same the same website, website okay. but uh, the, there is a mention of the sanctuary you can uh, there is a link to the sanctuary as well so uh, you can visit there right. and yeah it's in the same website it's part of human mm-hmm. animal society so we human have a yeah okay. right so that is something to keep in mind as well when you check the website thank you for watching if you're watching till now you're awesome and um, <laughs> let's make a difference yeah Thank you Mini ma'am. I'll see you once again later. Yes. That's possible. Yeah. Look forward, look you. forward. Thank you.